All right, let's get that out of the way. Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Rebecca Lees, and this is my YouTube channel, UX Specs, where we talk about everything user experience, instructional design, and data science. All right, so on Mondays, I plan to post study tips. Wednesdays, I plan to post common terms that you might experience within user experience, instructional design, or data science. And then on Fridays, I plan to do some game reviews and integrate a lot more of the UX element. And then what I plan to do on Sundays is to post a couple of different projects that have to do with things like data science and or instructional design. All right, guys, I wanted to everybody excited for the new year and for planning and for organizing. So what I wanted to do was organize a giveaway. If you want to be entered into the giveaway, comment below with your favorite tip from this video and how you implemented it. What I'm doing is giving away a lot of organizational things. I'm super excited about. Okay, so I have some uh, little organized tabs and they're all kind of the same theme a lot of little notepad, little flags. And then there's also um, a planner notepad and some more flags. And then there's a little organizer with to-do list, little sticky notepads. Got some stickers for a planner. Yeah. And then a bag, like a little zipper bag that says a bag of tricks. You can barely see it because it's it's white on white, but it says bag of tricks, which is kind of cool. And then a card that says dreams come true. Some pink filing organizers. And a set of inspirational pencils. Um, the one that I mentioned in my game review video that says, uh, you make it rain rainbows. That's one of the ones in here. This is from a company called Bando, I believe. Um, and they have some fantastic pencils. I love using them. Um, so awesome, super excited. And it comes with this little basket as well, a little like, uh, inbox basket. I'm so excited. This is the first of two giveaways that I'm going to do for this month. Uh, the other giveaway is very similar in nature. So if you don't end up getting the first one, then definitely check out next week so that you can enter in for the second giveaway. So we talked a little bit last week about to-do lists in our part one video. This is the part two of five. Today, we're gonna to talk about why you would use a to-do list. So for starters, it helps you increase motivation. This is something that is very difficult, especially when you're not feeling like you wanna do something, it's hard to get into it. Um, the way that it increases your motivation is that one, it gets you thinking about it, it gets you excited about it at first. After the motivation has dissipated, a lot of times the thing that remains that gets you through it is diligence. So one of the things that I want to emphasize here is that once you start to get that motivation going down, some of the other habits that we're going to talk about will help you with that diligence side. Feeling unaccomplished can be pretty demotivating, but if we have short achievable tasks on our to-do list that we're able to cross off fairly easily, then that's a really awesome way to keep us going, keep us motivated. It says, hey, I did something today. Cool. Cross it off. Hey, I did another thing today. Cool. Cross off. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult if you're putting too many things within one task. So for example, if you say you're going to read a book today, that might be a little daunting, but if you're going to read one chapter, that's a whole different thing. One chapter seems a lot less intimidating and intense than a whole book. So if you are ever feeling overwhelmed or intense, just break down the item into smaller bits and then use that as a way to create tasks for your to-do list. Making sure that you're motivated and diligent with your to-do list also helps 
combat things like imposter syndrome. If you're not sure what imposter syndrome is, it's basically where you don't feel like you are competent enough to be able to do what you're doing. When in reality, you have all of the qualifications and or you can easily get those qualifications if you just have a different mindset about it. And um, this often comes from people who have been told that they can't do something over and over and over again, and then they believe it. One of the ways to combat that is to make sure that you're noting what you're doing on a regular basis so that you can see your progress and track your progress from the beginning all the way to the end, because it's really hard to see how far you've come until you actually look at your beginning stages and your progress during the beginning part of whatever you're working on. To-do lists also help me identify tasks that I can delegate. And sometimes I need to delegate certain things because either I am not the subject matter expert in that instance and or I have too much to do and it is better served under somebody else because it will get done quicker. In order to figure out what you need to delegate, think about what your strengths are, be honest about what your strengths are, and then also figure out what your team's strengths are. So this could be a work team, this could be a school team, it could be just your family members trying to figure out household chores. The way I figure out whether I need to delegate it or not is first to figure out if I personally need to do this. So for example, with house chores, if I created a crafting mess, then I usually am the one who needs to clean it up because one, it's my mess, and two, it's because I know where everything goes at the end of the day. So usually the other people in my household won't touch my craftiness. That is something that I cannot delegate. Whereas if I have done something like uh, created a meal, then I can delegate the dishes to somebody else. Also, delegating tasks creates the perception from your team that you trust them. As long as you're doing it in a way that plays to their strengths and, and is helping them, um, you know, and also meeting your goals. For the most part, people feel like you are including them, that you trust them, that you rely on them, and that their work is important to you. So we talked a little bit about it last week, about how creating a habit triggers something in your brain. So when you have a particular habit that you already have, say you wake up in the morning and you go make yourself a cup of coffee. If you know that's something that you do regularly and you want to add a new habit, add that new habit onto an old habit so that you prime yourself for that ne next action. And then eventually you will unconsciously do that act without having to put that much effort or thinking into it. Right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is prioritization. One of the things that I struggle with is fighting particular tasks when I'm either afraid and or intimidated by it um, or if I don't want to do it. I will often ignore that task. So one of the things that helped me was to quote unquote, eat that frog. If you guys aren't familiar with that phrase, it's based off a book. Um, I'll link the book below in the description, but it's a really famous book basically talking about if you had to eat a frog every morning and that was the only bad, awful thing that you had to do, then why not just start with that and then let the rest of your day be stress and worry and an anxiety free. So, and I try to use that as much as possible, try to get rid of whatever task is the most daunting to me first thing in the morning so that I don't have to worry about things for the rest of the day. On days where this doesn't happen, I tend to be a lot more stressed. And on days when this does happen, I tend to be more relaxed, more comfortable with myself and with my progress. All right. So to review, we talked a little bit today about using short achievable tasks, delegating, actively working on habits. And then we also talked a little bit about doing your least favorite task first. So comment below with one of the tips that you use for this week and how you implemented it. And you could be entered into my giveaway and let me know how it goes. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Hit that bell for up-to-date notifications. Have a wonderful and efficient day. I'll see you guys later.